Hi, I'm Mike Lemieux. Some of you know me as Mikey or Giddy Up Mikey. I am the author of this book here, Dude, Where's My Jesus Fish? And I happen to be sporting my tie-dye Jesus Fish today. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> Uh, if you want to. <laughs> um, anyway, um, today I'm here to continue on with my Course in Miracles 100 series. This will be part three. Uh, originally was going to do five parts to this series, but I decided to change change it to six parts. Um, instead of doing 20 quotes, uh, I'll do 15 from here on out. Um, I already did the first uh, 40, so there's 60 left. So just divide it by four. We'll do 15. And um, one thing I wanted to share, too, before we got started, uh, big fan of the TV series The Walking Dead. Love that show. It's the best freaking show on the planet. Everyone should watch it. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> it's, it can be quite brutal and gruesome, but uh, it's, it's really well done. And, um, and uh, it's, it's, you know, the zombies in it, but it's not really about zombies. It's about the survivors and how they survive in the world and how they interact with other groups of people and stuff. Um, so it's pretty, very interesting show. Um, but uh, they had the season seven premiere a couple weeks ago and we had this big long six and a half month long cliffhanger. Uh, we knew somebody died but we didn't know who and we get that revealed. Um, this new villain's been introduced and uh, so I saw this episode, on uh, the season seven episode, twice that night. And I went to bed dreaming of this new villain, and he was torturing me. <laughs> and um, having read Gary Bernard's books uh, nonstop for the last nine and a half years, the Holy Spirit's message really sinks into the uh, deep canyons of my unconscious mind. And um, once in a while I'll have a dream that's kind of scary or freaks me out or something, and I remember to ask the Holy Spirit or Jesus for help in the dream. And usually I wake up just like that when I do remember to do that. So it was the case here. Um, where this this villain from The Walking Dead was torturing me in my dream. I asked the Holy Spirit for help, and I immediately woke up. So that was pretty cool. Um, anyway, uh, and that's mentioned about disappearance, uh, how that'll happen where you get so into the message of the Course and uh, you start practicing true forgiveness even while you're asleep at night. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's a sign of progress. Uh, obviously, still got a, work, a lot of work left to do, but... Um, it's good to know to get that encouragement once in a while that you're on the right track. So, anyway, um, we'll start off at number 41 today. Um, you have projected outward what is antagonistic to what is inward, and therefore you would have to perceive it this way. That is why you must realize that your hatred is in your mind and not outside it before you can get rid of it, and why you must get rid of it before you can perceive the world as it really is. Uh, yes, we all get hatred, otherwise we wouldn't be here. And of course, all hatred is ultimately self-hatred, because there's no one really else out there for it to go to. And um, without hatred in the mind, we wouldn't be here. Um, and hatred is a result of guilt. Uh, we feel guilt and hatred for ourselves, uh, for separating, our, separating from God, or seeming to separate from God. So, through true forgiveness, we undo the guilt and the self-hatred. <clears throat> Number 42. The world you see is the do I can't talk. <laughs> the, 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 all right, try that again. <laughs> the world you see is the delusional system of those made mad by guilt. Look carefully, look carefully at this world and you'll realize that this is so. For this world is a symbol of punishment and all the laws that seem to govern it are the laws of death. Uh, yeah, um, we are mad here uh, with guilt. Uh, oftentimes we're in denial of it. Uh, most of the people of the world are. They project it onto other people um, and blame them for their unhappiness or lack of success or whatever. Uh, somebody else is guilty, not them. So, But when we place blame, we're giving our power away to undo the guilt that's within ourselves. Um, so all it does is keep, the, keep us spinning our wheels. But if we take responsibility for it and we choose the Holy Spirit to see it differently, um, we can undo it in our mind and we don't need to project it anymore uh, onto someone else or onto ourselves. Um, so that's pretty damn cool. Okay, uh, 43. If this were the real world, God would be cruel. For no father could subject his children to this as the price of salvation and be loving. Um, yeah, uh, but this real world... 
thing is is also a dream um, but it's a prerequisite to heaven because we need to start seeing with the holy spirit before we can get to heaven so that's what the course calls the real world but uh, the real world isn't really real either <laughs> but we need it <laughs> to get to heaven or return our awareness back to heaven however you want to call it phrase it okay uh 44 your fear of attack is nothing compared to your fear of love Therefore, you have used the world to cover your love, and the deeper you go into the blackness of the ego's foundation, the closer you come to the love that is hidden there. And it is this that frightens you. And they put in italics, I have in capital letters here. Um, you know, that last sentence, you know, kind of gives you the chills. Um, and it is this that frightens you. And, you know, we're more afraid of love than we are of hate. Um, but as we undo the guilt through true forgiveness, we'll we'll be able to accept love, God's love, more and more. Because um, that's what we really are, is the love of God. Uh, okay. Number 45. Those whom you see as guilty become the witnesses to guilt in you. And you will see it there, for it is there until it is undone. Guilt is always in your mind, which has condemned itself. Project it not, for while you do, it cannot be undone. Yeah, getting back to that guilt thing and projecting it. Um, as we continue to project guilt, um, we can't we can't solve the problem because um, nobody else out there is the problem because they're not really out there they're just symbols of what's in our own unconscious mind and it just represents different aspects of the mind that need to be healed within okay number 46 contrasts and differences are necessary teaching aids for by them you learn what to avoid and what to seek the Holy Spirit must perceive time and reinterpret it into the timeless. He must work through opposites because he must work with and for a mind that is in opposition. Uh, one of the most helpful things um, in Gary Bernard's books was how they talk about how other course teachers teach the course or how other spiritualities aren't quite the same thing as the course. And for me, that was that was huge for me because the things I studied prior to Gary's books, I always felt some kind of, they were helpful in their own right, but I also felt some, uh, some confusion and contradiction with them. And Art and Persa cleared that all right up for me in Gary's books. Um, so that was huge for me. I know that's been helpful to some people and other people have ch chosen to be offended by that instead, <laughs> instead of learning something. Uh, but, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, everyone's time is ready for the truth when it's their time. Uh, did I say that right? Hopefully I did. <laughs> um, but I think you know what I mean either way. Okay, number 47. Ask not to be forgiven, for this has already been accomplished. Ask rather to learn how to forgive and restore to what was all... to. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Try that again. And to restore what always was to your unforgiving mind. Um, yeah, it goes back to that idea about uh, God does not forgive because he's never condemned. You're already forgiven because there was never anything to ever forgive anyway. Because um, this is just a dream. So no matter what we do here, it's just a dream. But it's just a matter of how long we want to stay stuck in the dream. And if we project guilt and anger onto other people, well, that'll just keep us stuck in the dream. And um, But if we do the forgiveness work, um, which removes the blocks to awareness of love's presence, which removes the unconscious guilt, which is the same thing, um, then we can go home and be happy forever. <laughs> uh, okay. Number 48. Leave the world of death behind and return quietly to heaven. There is nothing of value here and everything of value there. Um, yeah, there's, there's nothing here of value. We can doesn't mean we can't try to attain our goals and our, try to be successful here while we appear to be in the world, but um, we shouldn't believe it's true because uh, only God is true, only heaven is true, and anything in this in this world is 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 garbage, really. Um, even if, but we can still enjoy the garbage. <laughs> um, we just can't believe in it. Okay. Number forty nine. Forgiveness is the end of specialness. And you are not special. If you think you are and would defend your specialness against the truth of what you really are, how can you know the truth? Those who are special must defend illusions against the truth. For what is specialness but attack upon the will of God? Um, pursuit of specialness is always at the cost of peace. The Holy Spirit knows no one is special. 
Um, there's even a section in the course called the treachery of specialness. So this specialness thing isn't all it's cracked up to be. You know, we people cherish their individuality and their individual identities, but um, they have nothing to do with God. God didn't, didn't create us to be individuals. Um, the individual identity thing is just hallucination, uh, which we'll eventually wake it from once we realize that there's no value in it and we start doing the work to return to what we really are and where we really are, which has nothing to do with individuality. Um, some people in the Course community like to glamorize the soul and stuff like that, but um, even the soul is an individual identity and it's not real. Um, so we need to kind of like go beyond that <laughs> um, if we really want to attain the goal of the Course. Um, you know, you can't have specialness and oneness. It's impossible. They're two totally different opposing ideas. Um, and God only created oneness. So, anyway, uh, number 50. The reason this course is simple is that truth is simple. Complexity is of the ego and is nothing more than the ego's attempt to obscure the obvious. Yes, the truth is always simple. Um, in this world, even... In this world, there's always complexity. Complexity is of the ego, politics. It's never simple because there's so much ego intertwined with politics and trying to fix up the world. Um, so it's never simple. And uh, good thing is we got something that is simple, and we just got to like do the work. You know, art and person say simple but not easy, um, but it is doable, and it does say it's well worth it. And I, I. I think that's probably true. <laughs> well, it is true. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> I didn't know what to say, so I just said something stupid. So, anyway, <laughs> um, let me see what's next here. Uh, 51. All anger is nothing more than an attempt to make someone feel guilty. And this attempt is the only basis the ego accepts for special relationships. There's that special word again. Uh, guilt is the only need the ego has, and as long as you're a as long as you identify with it, guilt will remain attractive to you. So this whole guilt thing is, in tied, in, is tied up, intertwined with uh, specialness. Um, and without one, you have no need for the other. 52. Your confusion of sacrifice and love is so profound that you cannot conceive of love without sacrifice. And it is this you must look upon. Sacrifice is attack, not love. Um, this whole thing about the Course, uh, the teaching is us to give up uh, nothing in exchange for everything. So doing this forgiveness work isn't a sacrifice. Uh, we're just trying to head towards to where we have everything. And that's what Jesus wants. That's what God wants for us. Um, not literally, because God doesn't acknowledge that we're lacking. So um, we just need to remove the blocks to where we're just like God. And uh, that's all that God acknowledges. Uh, 53. To empathize does not mean to join in suffering, for that is what you must refuse to understand. That is the ego's interpretation of empathy, and is always used to form a special relationship in which the suffering is shared. Um, it reminds me of the Disappearance in the Universe in the, the chapter called Healing the Sick. Number one rule when it comes to spiritual healing. It's not about the patient. It's always your own sickness you see out there, in your own pain, in your own suffering. There isn't really anybody else there. Um, now, that doesn't mean you don't have compassion for that person because, um, you know, you don't want to be a jerk or anything. You don't want to tell the person, oh, that pain's not real. Get over it. Uh, that would be very nice. <laughs> um, but in your mind, you can see that person as what they really are because if you see that person as spirit, as what they really are, not this vulnerable body, vulnerable body, and then that's how it translates into your unconscious mind about yourself. Because if you see this person as sick and the suffering bastard, well, you're going to see yourself as being sick and a suffering bastard. And you don't want that because that's, there's no joy in that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, number 54. Um, only the holy insane could look on death and suffering, sickness and despair, and see it thus. Again, uh, that whole idea of seeing death and sickness as being real. Um, if you see it as being real... That's how it translates into your unconscious mind about yourself. That you're in a body and it's going to die. And that's your reality. But it's not your reality because your reality is with God. And what you are with God is limitless and eternal. And bodies are not limitless and eternal. They're all going to end up as corpses. And it's not very fun. Uh, especially for the people that you leave behind. <laughs> okay. Um, in fact, that was mentioned in The Walking Dead. You know, dying, dying is easy. It's, it's the people... 
you know, the people that are left that that are left that they have to warn you. That's the hard part. Okay. Um, number 55. Uh, am I at 55? I think I am. Yes. Uh, the real world is attained simply by the complete forgiveness of the old. The world you see without forgiveness. And again, that whole real world idea. Um, the real world isn't really real either. But we do need that as a prerequisite to heaven. And we have to do the forgiveness work. And the more and more we do the forgiveness work, the less unconscious guilt we're projecting out, out into the world. So that's where we start seeing the real world more and more and more. Even though it's not really real. <laughs> but, uh, but we do need that real world. Uh, to get us to heaven and uh, okay I think that's it we got to 55 so the next segment will be doing 56 through 70 I don't know why I turned the page I already know what it is uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know uh, was there something else I wanted to close with I can't remember now I guess not okay I think I'm done um, I really need to practice at this because I'm not very good being in front of a camera, <laughs> even though it's not live. Um, well, I guess I don't need to practice this because I'll probably just do this segment, the next few segments, and probably won't do one again for a long time. Uh, okay, I'm done. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs>